Hi everybody, I am Afefe with Touch by Tarot. So glad to see you. Thanks for coming to my channel. If you're here for the first time, I hope you like what you see and you'll hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I do, this is going to be a political check-in reading today, but I do a lot of political readings and spiritual readings. Uh, empowerment, healing, etc. Spiritual growth, personal development. So lots of things to check out. If you are interested in particular in politics, and that's why you're here, I do have a separate political playlist. So you can go and, and check out what I've done in that realm. Today, you all, let's take a look at a few things. I want to look at... Um, did you all see that Robert Kennedy uh, Jr. Uh, Super Bowl ad last night? That, <laughs> I woke up this morning thinking, you know what? I hope if nothing else that, that JFK and Robert Kennedy Sr. haunted that man all night long. I mean, I hope he heard bells clanging, maybe a couple of lamps tipped over, like whatever it took to just haunt his butt because this whole, he took a spot, if you didn't see it, it was a, a piece, $7 million, mind you. Uh, ads during the Super Bowl are not cheap for anybody. $7 million, apparently, he spent for this ad. And it was all black and white. It, it, it um, harkens from some, some political ads during the 1960 race, apparently, between Kennedy and Nixon. And so for a moment, it, it's sort of a time warp thing. You're looking at it like, wait a minute, what what is this? And why am I seeing it? And it's just Kennedy, 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 Kennedy. So he, you know, what he was doing was clear. And, and towards, you know, as you get into the, the uh, ad, then you see his face trans, uh, uh, transposed in black and white, you know, sort of, sort of like, I am, you know, I am the progeny of these people and this era. Like, okay, no, no vaccines, uh, all these other conspiracy theories, like the man is whacked out. So I just hope that that Kennedy, uh, JFK and Kennedy Sr., Robert Kennedy Sr., I hope they gave him a good old-fashioned haunting last night and the nights to come, right? Don't don't even call it quits. Don't let up off of him. All right, so enough said about that. I want to talk about three things today, go to spirit and get a little more clarity on you all. One is um, we heard that, you know, Trump came out, never any surprises what comes out of this man's mouth. However, uh, NATO, he basically said, you know, who... who flipped NATO the bird, said to, uh, for Putin, listen, do what you, you know, if I come back in, you can do what you want. You can have free reign of the globe. Just let the USA do the USA. We're going to be by ourselves. You know, the whole isolationist tilt. So I want to take a look and see how that landed, uh, even among his base and even among congressional leaders, uh, right wing congressional leaders. I want to take a look at that. Uh, I also want to take a look at, you know, in the wake of the special counsel hers report, I did a I did a segment on it last week um, about concerns over again, once again, over Joe Biden's age and his mental uh, acuity. All right. So I want to take a look at that because there is still, you know, some little undercurrent going here about we've heard David Axelrod, some other people who are generally respected. Uh, there's some there's an undercurrent here of should we be ready for plan B? You know, is is there a plan B? Is there someone else? So I want to take a look at uh, there are three people, you know, who always come to mind when we, we've been talking about 2028. That would be uh, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitmire and J.B. Pritzker out of Illinois. I want to look at, um, and there's some chatter about because, of course, at this point, we're too late. They can't the primaries are you know, are what they are. They can't get on the ballot. No, there no replacement can can officially be put on the ballot. But but I want to go to spirit and see if there is any kind of energy around this um, during possibly during the time of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago in August. Okay, so we're gonna gonna just take a look. I think it warrants that uh, because this is a conversation that isn't going away anytime soon. You know, um, Biden, I think, is strong. I think he's healthy. Everyone who looks at him, myself and other readers and psychics have looked at him. He is a fighter. He is going to make it happen. But, but still, but still, there's always a but still after that. So we'll take a look at that. And finally, some of you have raised, even in my, in the comments of my videos, and I appreciate that. Anything as long as it's respectful, I appreciate anybody's point of view. That is, that is a part of this democracy that we're all fighting for. Um, but I do want to take a look at 
the ways that um, I saw an interesting piece. I'll share the cover with you um, from the New Republic that is weighing the, the ways that the right wing media is dictating what the mainstream media does and thereby, you know, making the mainstream media pretty ineffective. I've heard from many of you who have said, listen, I tuned out of mainstream media a long time ago. Please understand that for me as a former newspaper journalist, that's a little hard, you know, that's a, that's a really bitter pill to swallow. I can get with, you know, CNN works my nerves, MSNBC works my nerves sometimes, but but still, when it comes to good old revered papers that I subscribe to, New York Times, Washington Post, uh, LA Times just went through a hellacious um, cutback, staff cuts, the editor quit, and, and it was the best thing we had going, in my opinion, uh, on the on the West Coast, you know, sort of the, the sister paper to the New York Times in that regard, in terms of, you know, just the quality of reporting and, and the objectivity and, and just solid, solid uh, journalism. But... Be that as it may, there's an interesting piece about the fact that mainstream media is losing its way and that it is so busy responding to stories that are being, um, you know, put out there by the right wing media that that there's no original thinking. There's no there's no, um, you know, moving the needle in in terms of really exploring the issues that matter to the American people. So I'm going to take a look at that as well. All right. That's it. Let's go in. First question, Spirit. When Trump made this uh, comment about NATO and about Russia telling Putin, you know, Russia can just do what it want, wants, how did that land with his base and with congressional leaders? How did that land? Is that something, um, is that, something that they truly get behind or is that something that's basically going to be tolerated from him? We have hmm, Nine of Cups. Let's see what that's all about. We have the Nine of Cups, the Queen of Swords, oh, you know what, and the Chariot. This is, um, you all don't count uh, at least Stephanic out just yet. Um, this is someone, this is a woman that has his ear, and I think this may be someone who he's considering for um, the vice president. A lot of people are talking very strongly and, and making very strong terms about um, uh, and moves of four around Tim Scott. I could see that as a perfect puppet. Uh, but but yes, I am getting a queen of swords standing up here. I just feel like that's someone who has his ear and they want him to do more of that. They want more of the isolationist propaganda coming forth as a part of their platform going into November. The Eight of Pentacles. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, this was a very deliberate, there's someone who has his ear because we know the man doesn't have an original thought. Um, but this is someone who has his ear. Potentially, I'm feeling like this is really someone of influence. It could be a campaign advisor, but I don't know. For some reason, Stefanik came to mind here. And, and this was a deliberate move the chariot and the nine of cups this was a deliberate move to advance their platform of you know get the the patriots you know really get the patriots activated and make it seem like that's all he cares about that's all he's looking out for you know i am your guy i am your pariah i i do it all for you sort of thing and we have the two of pentacles. Yeah, this was this was just him playing a couple of ends or playing to his audience and playing to um, playing to people who had bought his cult, playing to people who had bought into it. It's not. Um, I was wondering if there was a deeper tie even to Putin because part of what part of what rang a bell in for with me in spirit was like, mm -hmm, we got to remember um, Tucker Carlson was just there with Putin. And I definitely, if you if you didn't see that reading, you can go to my playlist because there's definitely spirit showed there was a tie between Tucker's uh, entree with with Putin and um, Trump and Melania even that that he was there. There were some conversations had that that he knew part of their agenda when he sat down with Putin. Of course, none of that worked. He looked perfectly dumb in doing it. But one more card, spirit, on that. Yeah, we have the Six of Pentacles. Okay, perfect. So so this was not even so much about pleasing um, Putin because that there was a part of me that thought that as well, that he was already laying the groundwork to, you know, 
love up on his old buddy, uh, Putin. But no, this was more about someone, someone had his ear, put that thought in mind and said, listen, you got to keep it going. You got to keep your momentum going. And so here's a topic. Here's, here's a zinger, you know, to put out there. Here's something that's going to, going to, you know, really ping the Patriots who don't see the need for us to be a part of NATO anyway, or are willing to accept America's diminished role in, in, in with our allies in NATO. So that's what that was about. It was definitely just a political stunt. I was thinking there might have been something deeper with Putin, but but I don't see it at this time. All right, moving ahead. This thing about Biden, you know, it's not it's, it hasn't gone away um, in terms of his age, in terms of that being, you know, an issue that certainly as it relates to attracting younger voters, the, the Gen Zers, um, the millennials, et cetera. Let's hope that uh, Taylor Swift is very, very, we know she's very, very happy today on, in the wake of the, uh, Travis Kelsey's win with the, with the Kansas City Chiefs. And, uh, but let's hope she you know, continues to use her voice in ways that we are definitely going to need. This country will need speaking of young people and getting young people to turn out to vote for Biden to that she can serve to a certain extent as a proxy for for Biden in that regard and and get out the the young vote because he's going to need it this thing with his age is not going away but I want to ask there is this you know there's a lot of blah 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 around seven of swords okay so it's bs in general it's all bs the this talk of replacing Biden it's that's not gonna happen. Um, I do want to see if if there's any serious talks among high-ranking um, people in the Democratic National Committee around this. Are they prepared for a backup plan? They are three of three of wands. So I think that's a practical matter because of and the King of Swords. Huh. All right, so I think that would be either probably Gavin Newsom that 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 because remember Gavin did come out and do his little uh, tw what we thought was a 2028 audition or part of his 2028 audition when he went up against um, Ron DeSantis not too long ago. We have the Nine of Wands. It's a backup plan. That's what it is. It's a backup plan. There are conversations that are being had among leading Democratic um, um, stakeholders and, and those in the committee who are, um, who are just saying, okay, what are the what ifs? And if we have any what ifs, Knight of Wands, exactly. If we have any what ifs that come up, you know, if there's a hiccup um, with Biden, either due to his health or any other issue that may come up, uh, personal reasons, etc. Do we have a backup plan? The star, absolutely. So, so there are talks about what happens in the event, right? And and we know that um, I don't know what the process is. I, I don't think that historically we've ever had to do that. But if if the bottom fell out, which we pray that it won't, please you all, let's pray for this man. Every day, uh, he needs, you know, there is power in prayer and he needs our prayer. Jill Biden, he needs our prayers uh, for his strength. Uh, Jill Biden, Dr. Jill Biden, she needs our prayers. She is a rock. She has been so exemplary as a first lady. So let's continue to support both of them with our prayers and send them light and energy. But there are some conversations on a very practical level, I think. I don't, I don't feel anything duplicitous behind this or nefarious behind it. I think there are just conversations about we must be prepared in the event of, et cetera, et cetera. And if that's the case, I think it's Newsom that, that they would tap, not Whitmire or, or Pritzker. Um, I think they, they get Newsom on board just because of the, you know, he was, he has been, I think, pretty, pretty much, you know, the presumptive, um, um, candidate for 2028. All right, let's move on to 
or at least one of the leading spirit is like spirit is dumb and like is that is that that's not what we said if <laughs> that's what you said because there are some other people and and of course we've got some emerging people as well Hakeem Jeffries keep him I don't I don't see him running for president um but I do see him making some moves so so keep our we'll keep our eyes peeled on him um, as well. And Gretchen, we cannot cut her, uh, count her out. And Pritzker, they are all very three strong people. I just, there's something added about Newsom, but Spirit was just like, don't count your chickens before they hatch a fefe. All right, got it. Finally, you all want to wrap up with, um, this thing on, I wanted to show you. Don't know how to share a screen yet, you all. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm not the most technical person, but my heart is always in the right place. Um, here we go. I'll show it to you this way. So this is a piece that's running today from a Michael Tomaski in the um, New Republic. And it says, the only mental acuity I'm questioning these days is the mainstream medias. Let me hold that up for you. Sorry for the ring light. Okay. Great piece. You might want to check it out. Because what he's talking about, what Tomaski is saying is, and it's a really valid point. I know so many people are frustrated with the mainstream media because there's no, uh, it's either, you know, going one side or the other. We've got Newsmax and Fox and then, you know, counterpoint with CNN and NBC, uh, MSNBC. And again, even even it feels like to, to a certain extent, two stalwarts, uh, journalistic stalwarts, in my opinion, the New York Times and the, the Washington Post are increasingly called upon advertising dollars we know newspapers are being uh print print newspapers are being decimated in this country uh there are layoffs left right and center and in particular it has been happening uh tail end of 23 2024 pluto and aquarius energy in effect uh, uh technology things going digital advertising dollars going down for anything in print media so i understand that but but so there's this influence and there's this pressure to keep the headlines around what everybody else is looking at and i think to some extent that is part of what's causing the media's downfall i just want to look at and i'm asking spirit is this a is this a continuing trend because if so you know, how, who are we to trust? Are we to, to get, just choose all of our own independent sources off of off of media? Do we share resources? And having said that, by all means, uh, feel free to drop a comment if there, I know there are a lot of people on this platform who enjoy Midas Touch and some others. Um, so yeah, if you've got some really good, if you know some good outlets, you know people who are putting, you know, pivotal issues out there in a, in a very, you know, factual, well-sourced way, then by, by all means, please do share that information. All right, Spirit, so what's up with the mainstream media? Always, you know, TikTok, and, it, and it's also basically what the, the gist of this article in the New Republic is saying. The, the right-wing media is dictating what the whole entire uh, discussion for the American people, no matter, no matter what your affiliation, because there's always this response to what the right wing media is putting out versus coming up with, you know, issues and stories and sourcing stories that are more original and, and more prevalent and more, more at issue with the broader public, with the democracy. All right, we have the five of wands. So that, that's the conflict. It's not that it for for many who um, and certainly for those boots on the ground, meaning the journalists who are out here doing the work, they want to do the best work. They want that's their names on the bylines. Many of them have spent a whole lot of money going to journalism school, and there ain't a whole lot of money in journalism. I'm here to tell you that. So, but but there is that conflict, and I think the conflict comes from these boards. Am I right about that spirit? Is it where's the conflict? Where's the source? The hangman, with the queen of pentacles, and the chariot. I'm going to see, uh, please show me this, the queen of pentacles, a little more clarity around the queen of pentacles spirit. Why is the queen of pentacles here? Three of... Queen of Pentacles comes with the Three of Pentacles. So Spirit is like, I said what I said, Afefe. But I get it. Um, this is 
rather than representing a person, this is representing an energy, an energy in regards to how news is put out. The Queen of Pentacles as an energy, as an archetype in tarot, we're talking about the way that news is brought to us in a way that is meant to feed us, nourish us, um, help us feel capable in terms of whether we can trust what we're hearing, whether we can count on what we're hearing, whether what we're hearing is solid. And also from a standpoint of because it's a queen and not a king. With queens, there is that creative aspect. There is that license to be able to move about and get the news that is relevant to people, the freedom to be able to do that. There's the work. There is this community of journalists and, and the mainstream media as, as, a, um, as an industry. So the industry itself is in crisis. It's in, you know, and it doesn't know. Talk about two very contrasting energies. On the, one, the, the hangman is like, I don't know where to go. I'm at a standstill. I'm in, a, I'm in a, a, a situation of crisis. I don't know how to make this happen. And the chariot is quite the opposite of that, which says, get up, get it going, keep moving. So on the one hand, the, the dichotomy here is the media is pressured to constantly be on this 24-hour news cycle. Get it out, get it out, get it out, make it happen. And at the same time, it's, but should we? And how do we? And what if we? And we are up against it. So so it's, it's very, very opposing and contrasting energies that are resulting in, look, we got a deadline. Every day people are going to go online and, and pull up our website and we got to have some headlines, uh, attention grabbing headlines on the cover. And that's what matters right now. We don't have time to think about the high priestess. Thank you, spirit. We don't have time to think about un unveiling the truth, you know, digging deeper, you know, un uncovering the mysteries of what's really happening, doing the deeper investigative reporting, breaking those stories like... We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have the manpower. We don't have the luxury. We are so busy trying to to provide. And I think there's even, going back to that Queen of Pentacles, I think there's even, whether it's true or not, a little delusional, there's this, um, there's this talking point of at least we are providing a different voice. At least we are you know, countering or, or giving people a source to come to so that they're not just left with this right-wing media. They don't have to rely on that. We would never have our people, you know, stoop so low as to sit and, and have to rely on Fox News or Newsmax for their, for their information, right? So there's this almost telling themselves that they are serving the cause, they are serving the greater good, but it's really because they're in this bind between the hangman and the chariot. You know, we, we realize that we need to step back, reconsider, do it a different way. We know we're not doing our best and we'd like to be able to do better. But at the same time, the clock is ticking, you know, and every day we got to get that content freshened up. All right. All right, you all. I hope that was uh, helpful. I hope you found it um, and from, you know, just something to talk about and keep the dialogue going. And again, I welcome your comments, especially as it relates to news sources, news outlets that you all turn to, that you all have found to be reputable. Be really good to share that within the community. And otherwise, I'll talk to you real soon. Have a good one. Bye.